What was really exciting about Love, Death and Robots was basically Tim Miller, the producer, was creating a sandbox for animators to explore creatively without trying to fit into a franchise or fit into a particular audience. He basically picks all the short stories and then you're allowed to run with quite a bit of freedom within that framework. And that was obviously really exciting for us. In Vaulted Halls and Tombed, it's a military store, basically soldiers meet creature and have to fight for their lives. So Doug Audie approached me and said, we're gonna do this thing, it's got Cthulhu in it. And I said, I'm in. And then he said, photorealistic humans, multitudes of swarming flesh-eating insects. And he said, we're gonna do it in Unreal Engine. And I said, I don't know what that is, so let's let's get into it. Let's try it out. I've been intrigued by real-time filmmaking for, for many, many years, even prior to the advent of Unreal and other types of technology like that. And I was looking for an opportunity to do something creative using real time. I saw the episode for LDR as a perfect opportunity, even though we had no prior footprint for Unreal at the company. It was a leap of faith. It's gonna be hard, there's no roadmap, there's probably no parachute. I love those kind of challenges. I love going into a project where you may not know how you're gonna do it. You have to have enough confidence and maybe enough self-delusion. If you get to work on something like this once in your career, I mean, you're lucky. What I found to be really exciting about this workflow was the fact that in pre-production, when you're building assets that you're going to be using in layout, those are the same assets that are going to end up in the final piece. They just get progressively better through the process. We built an entire 15-minute piece as a framework to work from within two weeks. Next step would be to take that up and sort of raise the level of the entire piece all at the same time, right up until the shoot. We were showing blocking. We actually got feedback from the clients. They're like, uh, did you spend all your rendering budget on your assets already? Working inside of Unreal flips the script a little bit. Our asset artists become world builders and they are able to pick and choose from the Quixel library or other libraries that we have available. The Fidelity that's available to you at the click of a button, it's incredible, it's amazing. And it allows ideas to happen organically and you can explore. You're just not focused on turntables anymore. You're seeing things live in the shots as they are meant to be. And you get swept up in the story, you get swept up in the capacity to change it and shape it. It's pretty liberating. The performance capture process, we prepared on real assets that could be play it on monitors, tracked with the camera in real time, where then the actors could then see themselves in the body of their avatars. And then they would know, as they're walking through a tunnel, for instance, the curve of the tunnel, they actually will maybe crane their head and kind of peek around the corner. But on the set, what they're really seeing is just a bunch of poles indicating the volume of the tunnel. And that's vital for helping performances. Usually, it takes a week or so before I can get the data. I have to actually order the data and be very specific about which takes I like so that they can process the body motion capture first so then we can begin the process of doing layout. Normally we try to make our first edit with cuts from the video footage, which is this mix of 2D storyboards and video footage of actors running around on a soundstage with tights. And it feels a million miles away from what your project is gonna look like. With Unreal's involvement, you get the take recorder clips almost right away. You've got characters interacting in your environment and you can place cameras on them. You get the eye lines figured out and what your cutting pattern looks like. And that's gonna inform how you make your mocap selects. Now you're making your cut with footage that looks like the footage in the final project. We can't say enough about MetaHumans. The project was very ambitious. It was doing six characters human photorealistic characters in engine for 15 minutes short, all of them with dialogue, many of them with various degrees of mutilation and complexity. In our early discussions with Epic, and they showed me an early version of the MetaHuman demo, which was basically almost pre-beta code. It was super impressive. 
definitely one of the most time consuming and resource intensive things we do is build face rigs. They're incredibly resource heavy, lots of iterations. There's a ton of bespoke work involved in that. So when we knew we had the prospect of MetaHuman, we, we thought, yeah, let's lean on these guys and see what they can deliver for us. We ended up using them for three of our six human characters that have face rigs. And the rigs are as powerful as any rigs we're using right now. You know, it's a real game changer. It, it is something that allows you to not worry about the details of that aspect of it, and you can focus on the storytelling. Real-time technology has started to blur the lines between what was otherwise weeks and months of rendering to get to final product. Once you've got your environments laid out, your sets are lit, everything is looking good, your performances are in there, the animation's in there, you can rework the entire film in a day or two, like every shot. When you get used to doing real-time decision-making, the quality of the work is always better. So that edge that the engine gives you is incalculable. It's easy for me to say that I don't want to go back.